Did you know that we have our own pharmacy inside of our brain? Our brain can produce our own painkillers, our own antidepressants, and our own anti-anxiety medications. Today, I'll tell you about these substances and how you can activate this inner pharmacy naturally. So let's talk about the brain's inner pharmacy today. First of all, I need to mention that if you take any prescription medication that I will mention in this video, you should not stop taking them before you discuss it with your doctor. There are many people who take these medications and they need them. There can be serious consequences if you stop taking these medications. But it's also true that our brain can produce these substances and there are natural ways to stimulate the brain to produce them. So if you want to learn how to boost your inner pharmacy to produce these substances, this video is for you. Some people might be able to reduce the use of prescription medications by using these natural strategies, but please, Check with your doctor before you make any change to your medications. In this video, I'll talk about how our brain can release endorphins, which are powerful painkillers, cannabinoids, which are essential for many functions in our body, how our brain releases serotonin, the powerful mood neurotransmitter, and last, dopamine, the feel-good substance. First, endorphins. Endorphins are produced in the hypothalamus and pituitary gland. There are 20 different types of endorphins. The most studied is the beta endorphin. Our brain releases them when we feel pain or when we are under attack, stress, or under a dangerous situation. The name endorphin means it is our endogenous or internal morphine. When endorphins are released, they will activate receptors that block the pain sensations. So they reduce pain intensity. They also reduce the sensations that we are in a dangerous situation like fear and stress. There are some situations that the person does not produce enough, enough endorphins. We know that if a person takes exogenous opioids, like prescription opioids for pain, they inhibit the production of their own endorphins. It is like the brain takes a vacation and does not need to produce that much. We don't know what happens after the person stops taking the prescription opioids, if they will be able to return the normal production of endorphins or not. One thing is for sure, people cannot live well without their endogenous opioids. They are essential for life. So, what can people do to increase their endorphin levels? Here is the list of natural methods to boost the production of endorphins. Exercises. Yes, there are people who get addicted to beta endorphin. Have you heard of runner's high? These people run or do vigorous exercises for hours to boost their endorphins and they do get high. We know that the beta endorphin is very potent, even more potent than prescription morphine. Which exercise is better? We know from researching humans that high intensity aerobics exercise are the best. These are cardio exercises that pumps your heart and make you sweat and short of breath. There is evidence that high intensity interval training or HIIT also works really well. These are sessions with a few minutes of extreme effort alternated with recovery periods. If the person cannot do high intensity aerobics, then the other options are resistance training, which are exercises to gain strength, usually with weights. And other types of exercises that also work are moderate intensity aerobics or cardio, which includes walking, 
biking, dance, sexual activity or playing sports. Other natural ways of boosting endorphins are laughing, listening to music, meditation, eating dark chocolate. Yes, I like that one, but do not go crazy with that. It has to be at least 70% cocoa and just a small quantity per day. There are some treatment interventions that stimulate the brain to produce endorphins and they include acupuncture, massage and electrical stimulation like TENS. Now, when endorphin is released, it will activate the pleasure centers in the brain, which will then produce dopamine. That is why when a person takes prescription opioids, they may feel a pleasure sensation. It is a normal reaction of the body. In some cases, the person may not notice it because of the side effects of the opioids are so bad, like nausea, vomiting, dizziness, drowsiness, or sonolence. But before I continue, let me remind you that this video is not intended to replace medical advice. If you have a condition that needs medical advice, please talk to your doctor. This video is for educational purposes only. And if there is an emergency, please call an ambulance or go to the nearest emergency department. Dopamine is the substance involved in the reward system. It is an important neurotransmitter in life. It is released when we do something that gives us pleasure. It is the hormone that our brain releases when we are learning something new and we get a gesture or words of affirmation, like a pat in the back and a well done said to us. When a child is learning to walk, to ride a bike, to do multiplication tables, learning to read, to write, they need reinforcement. Each time they get a positive reinforcement, they release dopamine. Adults also need dopamine to reinforce what we are doing right. It is an important neurotransmitter for motivation. That's why there are people addicted to social media, shopping, video games, gambling or pornography. The reward system will get a boost in dopamine with these activities. If the person is addicted to social media, every time they get a like or a subscriber, they release dopamine. Some people develop addiction to substances like nicotine in cigarettes, alcohol and drugs like cocaine, heroin, cannabis or opioids. But it's much easier to stop addiction to social media than it is to stop using substances. When the person uses substances to get a peak of dopamine, there is a very strong link in the brain and it's very hard for them to stop taking the substances because the withdrawals are terrible. But the other problem with addiction is that once the person experiences the dopamine peak from these substances, they lose the interest in other activities in life because they do not give the same high peak of dopamine than these substances give. Dopamine is essential for life. We need dopamine to learn, to sleep, to process painful sensations and get motivation. There are some people who have a disease where their brains do not produce dopamine well and they develop stiff muscles, depressive mood, and they need to take prescription of levodopa, a drug that will replace the natural dopamine they don't produce anymore. An example of a disease like this is Parkinson's disease. So what are the natural ways to make our inner pharmacy to produce dopamine? Well, dopamine is made from an amino acid called tyrosine. So eating more tyrosine in our diet will help our brain to get the nutrients it needs to produce our dopamine. Foods rich in tyrosine are avocados, bananas, pumpkin seeds, soy, dairy foods like milk, cheese and yogurt, and poultry meat. People who suffer from sleep deprivation or those who have a bad night of sleep tend to produce less dopamine. That is why it is important to invest energy fixing your sleep. 
I have another video about sleep efficiency if you want to learn more. Other natural ways to produce dopamine include exercises and meditation. Yes, the same things that stimulate endorphins. What about serotonin? Our brain's inner pharmacy also produces serotonin from an amino acid called tryptophan. Serotonin is an essential substance to maintain our mood. People with mood disorders may become too sad or depressed, or too happy, known as mania. Serotonin is produced in the brainstem and is important not, on, not only for mood, but for memory, for sleep, to respond to a dangerous situation, and many other body functions. When a person has depression, I mean, they are not just sad because something bad happened. This is not depression. This is normal sadness. I mean, depression has a disease. It means that the person has a profound sadness that is independent of what's happening around them. It is not because something bad happened. And they don't get better if something happy happens to them. The disease of depression is diagnosed by a healthcare professional after an extensive examination and exclusion of other health problems. The disease of depression is related to low serotonin levels. The depression can be classified into mild, moderate or severe. Some people will need to take antidepressant medications to increase their levels of serotonin in the brain. Other people will need to be admitted to a hospital to receive treatment and to avoid that they do any harm to themselves or other people. A person taking prescription antidepressants for any reason should not stop abruptly. They need to talk to their doctor, whoever is prescribing their medications, and discuss if they can stop or not. I have another video that I explain depression. Check it here. The treatment of depression involves six P's. Pillow for sleep, plate for foods, physical exercises, psychological therapy, and pills for antidepressants. Sleep hygiene is very important to regulate the production of serotonin. Foods like complex carbohydrates, which are found in vegetables, fruits, legumes, and whole grains, are excellent sources of tryptophan. Tryptophan is also found in protein-based foods like meat and dairy. There are other natural ways to increase the levels of serotonin, like exposure to night nature, sunlight, and meditation. The last substance that we will mention today are the endocannabinoids. Our brain and brainstem produce endocannabinoids, and the most studied is anandamide. I talk about anandamide in another video of Cannabis for Pain. We still do not fully understand the endocannabinoid system. We know that these endocannabinoids have a structure like the THC found in the cannabis plant. The endocannabinoid system is important in memory, learning, sleep, to tell us when we are hungry, to relieve pain, to boost our mood, and to regulate fear and anxiety. The endocannabinoid system is closely related to the endogenous opioids, dopamine, and serotonin substances that we talked before. So, Watch my videos of exercise here to activate your inner pharmacy today. If you like this video, give your thumbs up here and don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Goodbye!